The following message is a presentation of Ligonier Ministries, home of the radio program Renewing Your Mind with R.C. Sproul. There's an American tradition that I join in with at home with our grandchildren, and it's the telling of knock-knock jokes. I love knock-knock jokes. Knock-knock, who's there? Oswald, Oswald who? Oswald and my gum. You all know the knock-knock jokes. Well, during the trial of the century, a new knock-knock joke was created. I don't know who thought it up, but the knock-knock joke went something like this. Knock-knock, who's there? O.J., O.J. who? You're on the jury. (laughs) The idea was that everybody in America had heard of O.J. Simpson and was aware of all of the publicity surrounding the murder of his ex-wife and Ronald Goldman. We couldn't imagine finding somebody in America who hadn't heard all of the news of that particular incident. Well, a similar surprise takes place right outside of Jerusalem immediately after the resurrection of Christ from the dead. We read in the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke this following account. Now behold, two of them, that is, followers of Jesus, were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And so it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Now, you get the picture. These are two men who are leaving Jerusalem right after all of the events surrounding the crucifixion of Christ and his subsequent resurrection, and they're busily engaged, thinking, reasoning, talking about all of the reports that they were hearing and the latest news bulletins from CNN at the time. And while they're so engaged in this conversation, Jesus himself draws near. But he comes incognito. We don't know whether it was something about him that made him unrecognizable, but the text would indicate something else, namely that God, for one reason or another, had kept their eyes from seeing him as he was and concealed his identity from them. Boy, if you ever were a fly in the wall in a scene of history, wouldn't you love to have been there on this occasion and just watch the events unfold as Jesus comes up and joins in, kind of eavesdropping on their animated discussion about what had just so recently taken place. And so Jesus said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? And then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, and have you not known the things which happened there in these days? It's as though Cleopas turned to Jesus and said, Knock, knock. (laughs) Is anybody home? Where have you been? Haven't you heard what has taken place here? Now, Jesus doesn't lie at this moment. He doesn't say, No, I don't. He simply evades their question and answers their question with a question, playing dumb like a fox for a moment, saying, what things? I mean, that's where I would love to be, the fly in the wall, to watch these guys having this conversation with Jesus himself, and Jesus is playing like Lieutenant Columbo. He's (laughs) playing dumb when he, more than anybody, knew exactly what had taken place, but he wants their view of the matter. He wants to hear how they understood what had taken place in the previous hours and where their heads were about his death and resurrection. And so our Lord said to these two men, what things? What things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. 
But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And then certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they didn't see. Now remember, Jesus notices that the countenance of these men was sad. They were not leaping for joy as they made their way back to Emmaus. Obviously, they had not yet been persuaded of the truth and the reality of the resurrection. Mary had come to the tomb in the morning hours, and she saw someone appear to her there that at first, in her own grief, she thought was the gardener until she heard his voice speaking softly to her, saying her name, Mary. And when Mary Magdalene heard that, there was instant recognition of that voice. And she turned and she looked at him and said, Rabboni, meaning master or teacher. And so this woman was face to face with the risen Christ. And she and her friends ran back to Jerusalem, came to the disciples, and announced to them that they had found the empty tomb, that they had seen angels, and they had seen the risen Lord. And Peter and John raced to the garden tomb. But when they arrived, there was no sign of Christ. But the tomb was empty, and the grave cloths were folded perfectly on the floor. And we hear the record of angels that were there at the tomb who announced saying, do not look here for the living. He is risen. But until Jesus appeared in the upper room and showed himself on a couple of occasions to his disciples, they still were not sure. They didn't give a lot of credence to the testimony of the women. They thought the women were just being emotional and being excitable. And now two of the company of followers of Jesus are making their way to Emmaus, and they're talking about these things, and they're talking about their broken hearts. They're talking about their disappointment. And when Jesus said, what things? They said, are you the only one in Jerusalem that doesn't know these things? We're talking about Jesus of Nazareth. A man we all recognize was a prophet mighty in deeds, in acts, and in the Word of God. He was the one we hoped would redeem Israel. But obviously, they had lost that hope. But they're trying to explain this all to the stranger who was fallen in beside them, and they said, we had high hopes for him. We left everything to follow him. We trusted him. We watched him perform miracles. And we invested our souls in him. But he allowed himself to be taken into custody and to be killed. We're trying to figure it out. We're reasoning with each other. And then we hear this incredible story from the women who say that they went to the tomb this morning and that the tomb was empty and they couldn't find his body. And now they're trying to wonder and figure out what happened to the body. And so Jesus spoke to them. Oh, foolish ones. Oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? 
And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. This stranger appears to them. He listens to their tale of woe and their expression of disappointment and their bewilderment at the tales that they were hearing from the ladies. And they're sort of mocking the women. And all of a sudden, this stranger looks at them and says, Oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the Scriptures say concerning the Messiah. These things that you've just witnessed didn't spring de novo from the head of Zeus. These things that you've just encountered were predicted over and over and over again on the pages of Scripture. Here, let me show you. Jesus begins to give them an elementary Bible lesson. And he starts in the Pentateuch, probably with Adam, and then to Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph. Then he goes through the Exodus and the prophecies given by Moses of the prophet who would come, the one like Moses. And he gives a rehearsal of all of the predictions found in the prophets of the Old Testament. All of those statements that God had revealed in the Old Testament that converged on the person of Christ. I'm sure he quoted to them from the prophet Isaiah about the suffering servant of Israel who would be bruised for their iniquities. And he opens up the Word. It's an incredible thing. Then when Jesus takes the task of being an apologist for the truth claims about his own person and about his own work, he goes to the sacred text and shows that years, centuries, at times millennia, before the Messiah ever appeared. There are specific, concrete prophecies spelled out about the nature of his mission, of his life, and of his death. I don't remember the number, but I once read a number given by a mathematician who said that the odds against a chance combination of the confluence of all of the specific prophecies about Jesus of Nazareth that they could come to pass and focus on one person accidentally in history were like 64 kajillion billion googleplex to one. It was astronomical. I don't know the number because I don't know what you call a number with that many zeros after it. And so Jesus rebukes them for their unbelief for how slow they are to wake up and to come to grips with the reality of Christ. Boy, wouldn't you have loved to have been in that Bible class and heard that exposition? So then they drew near to the village where they were going. And he indicated that he would have gone farther, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent, And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. What an incredible account! The seven mile journey is over. They arrive at Emmaus, and Jesus indicates that he's going to continue on his journey, and he's about to bid them farewell. But they're so impressed by the teaching that they've just heard from Christ that they begin to plead with him, no, 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 stay with us a little longer. Have dinner with us. Stay the night with us, please. Now, who knows where Jesus was headed or what his next mission was? But he accedes to their requests, and he goes in to an inn, perhaps, and there he sits down to dinner with these men and continues this face-to-face conversation. And when the bread was served, just as he had done only hours earlier in the upper room, he took this bread and he broke it 
and he blessed it. To those who were at table with him, and he distributed to them. And at that moment, their eyes were opened, and they knew him. Can you imagine the existential poignancy of that moment? They're sitting at a table breaking bread with the risen Christ. And when they sat at that table, they had no earthly idea who he was. But when God removed the scales from their eyes and they saw him and recognized him, and instantly he vanished from their midst. If you think they were puzzled before they met this stranger on the road to Emmaus, can you imagine their consternation now? I don't know whether they were giddy, you know, whether they just sat there and started to laugh and give each other high fives and say, Can you believe it? Can you realize what we just experienced? It was he. We've been with Jesus. He's alive. One of my favorite texts of all the scripture follows upon this account. Verse 31 reads, Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Now hear this. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road? And while he opened the scriptures to us, Cleopas says to his friend, do you remember when we were back there on the road? Do you remember when he was talking out of Isaiah? Or was it the reference to Moses? But boy, I was feeling funny. I mean, something strange happened to me when I was listening to him teach the scriptures. I had a strange feeling a sense of warmth, of heat. But it wasn't from the sun. It wasn't on the surface. It wasn't external. It was something that developed deep within my soul. Did not our hearts burn within us as we heard him teach from the Word of God? How many times in church history have we heard that testimony? John Wesley when he stood in the crowd at Alder's Gate and heard the lesson from the book of Romans, the lesson that turned his life upside down. Afterwards, John Wesley said, as I was standing there hearing the word of God, my heart was strangely warmed. Warmth is the opposite of coldness. When the scriptures describe our natural condition as fallen human beings, they describe it as this, that we have hearts that are like calcium. They are recalcitrant. They are reified. They are like things, inert, stony, cold. But the Spirit of the living God has the power to take the Word of God and pierce that stony heart and turn that heart of stone into a heart of flesh that it begins to beat and pulsate and make alive. But a cold heart can't do that. It has to be warm. It has to become sanguine for faith to come alive. Did not our hearts burn within us? as he was teaching us from the Word. You know, Jesus didn't need to do it from the Word. He could have just said, open your eyes, fellas. The living Word is here. Here I am. Look at the marks in my hand. Look at the marks on my forehead. I am the crucified Lord. He could have simply done it directly and immediately. But instead he said, no, I'm going to do it through the medium of sacred Scripture. And the Bible tells us that the power of the Word of God is living. It is vital. 
And the Spirit of God works with the Word of God to bring life out of death, to bring warmth out of coldness. And the chill and the frost that had descended upon these men's hearts was melted by the teaching of sacred Scripture. What an experience to be face to face with Jesus and not even know who he was. For more information about Ligonier Ministries, call 1-800-435-4343 or contact us on the web at Ligonier.org. That's L-I-G-O-N-I-E-R dot O-R-G. Or write P.O. Box 54-7500, Orlando, Florida, 32854.